Welcome back to another rig review and today I'm going to take a look at the Osri rig which is part of the Game Anim book and you can go on to GameAnim.com you can go on that website and check out everything that they have here and if you are interested in the book I have reviewed it before I will put the link in the description for my impressions on the book which was a spoiler very cool and if you want to download the rig you can go on to GameAnim.com slash product slash Osri or is it Osri? Asri dash rig, but all the links to the goodies are in the description below. So let's go back to the rig, which comes in like this into your scene when you first open it. All the controls are there, and you have multiple layers here on the right. I'm going to turn everything on, which is bananas, but just to show you what's on there. So you have a lot of extra controls already at your disposal if you need them. So, first off, you got your main controller here that gives you an overall movement option on that rig nothing else there to see then going down here you do have your sword which i'm going to take out on the side just for now there's also a collision locator as it seems right next to the feet and as always i don't know why i check out ik legs and all that good stuff out first you never know you just want to see how they function you got knees come with it there's nothing tightly constrained there you do have a pull vector for your knee and when you go back to the foot control you do have a foot roll option like this in the channels you have a twist like that and you have a bank which is super helpful i'm always a massive fan of a bank option that gives you an option to pivot off of this section here so you don't have to rotate with the pivot off of here and then translate into uh, and to compensate so that is very cool to have big fan if you are looking for a knee control in the channel that is not there so you're gonna have to do it through this you do have options here on the foot for a foot roll like that and for toes like this now in all of these you can select this controller you can select this one or this one it doesn't matter you will have the ikfk switcher right there and then it switches to the classic fk switch where you can do everything like this all the way down to the toes if needed so basic controls are there like i said here on the main controller that's the main control there's no resolution switch or anything else that sometimes some rigs have so this is all very clean here then you have your hip control and you can see here the influence one that's ik one that's fk also glad to see that nothing in the upper body is being affected by the hip which is always good otherwise you have to do a lot of uh, countering then you get into the spine control you have separate ones here and all that stuff i'm gonna go crazy here and you can see all of that works as it should you also have your main root control that moves the rig around no additional uh, options in the channel control to be seen here so it's all very straightforward i don't see anything else nor is there anything hidden because every now and then you see in the rig you go in there and it's hidden uh you do have your arm controls through here and the same thing you can select all of these and you're always going to have an ik fk control so in here why not let's switch to ik and you can see the handle here and the wrist is locked by default here to follow like sticky ik and then you have your your elbow functions through here there is no channel control nope for here you just have that and you can change the rotation on the wrist on the same controller some people prefer it separate i actually like it on one you can just pose up faster when you do things like this but everybody has their own ways of doing things closer here you have your finger controls they seem to have hmm, interesting inversion there on the channel so if i select this and go like that oh, okay so you can see in the rotations that the z is not quite consistent there just something to look out for as you select everything you do have something here that is the hand grip control which i'll talk about later you have overall finger at the top level here and of course all the individual fingers and here the rotations are correct everything is okay going and check on the other hand you can do this here and you can see it's the same with this thumb here that being said there are updates of this rig so check every now and then to see maybe something has changed recently but that is it what you can see here i don't see any finger spread controls or anything else that is visible here you have same grip con here 
So there's a lot of manual control left for you to do here. That's about it. I am looking at shoulder controls, which seem to be these guys, scapula. So you can go up here. There you go. Ooh, the nice deformations there, all that stuff. It's very cool. It's all there is there. Now, looking at the face here, what do I have? You have a lower neck control and you got the parenting world or local. So same thing here. If you change something in the body, the head stays put. And if you switch back to local, it does this, which I'm usually a bigger fan of. So otherwise it has that weird IK head look. Just depends on how you are used to animating. You got control here and that's pretty much it on that. No extra control is here in the channels. I'm assuming this will be the jaw. This is the jaw. And here you have individual lip controls. You don't have to go one by one. There's nothing that overrides other shapes. And looking in here, you do have tongue control as well, which seems to be a spline. Let me see here. So you have, looks like the tongue is rolled up. So if you take this out, you can see here, tongue controls. Now also very visible here, hair. You got hair controls. And this is also on the side here. So you can turn this on and off if you want. But it's cool that you have all these options and these seem to be an FK version Ooh, and a translatable spliny version as well. So lots of options on that hair, which is very cool. And just to turn that off, you can turn the controllers off here. Just checking if I miss anything. There doesn't seem to be a control. Wow, texture is gone for the um, ears. And then up here you have your eyebrows like this, including the inner. Just checking, yep, that's all you have. There's no overall where you have maybe one control that moves all of them. But that's again, that's fine too. You got your eyelids as a rotational control in all kinds of ways. Cool, cool, cool. And that is, it looks like it's segmented, but it's not. It's just the con that looks that way. And if I am checking my eye controls here, same thing. Yeah, you can just move your eyes and you got your separate eye box. If I turn this off here, you can see how it moves those eyes. It's always worth checking because every now and then you select eye controllers and you have options on the right for blinks or whatnot. But this is all very clean on the face. It's a bummer though. It's a bummer about those ears. But to go back, you have additional cloth options here. I turned that on and off, but I didn't show anything. So if you want to do all kinds of movements here or, you know, to fix it to sections as well, you have all of this at your disposal and you can rotate and also just translate out. And this goes all around, which is very, very cool. Look at this. There's a ton of stuff you can do because as you hit those poses, you are going to have to deal with intersections and you can all the way down to this here, the flaps. And if I look at just the skeleton itself, I see all those joints, but there are no joints for the ears. That's just a bummer. Well, let's turn off the cloth options here. And going back to this here, you have twist that was set on template. But if you have this here, you can see all those spiky controls. What is that? There are many of those and they are for extra bendy options here. You got even separate stuff here too here for the uh, for the wrist. But this is for if you go a bit more cartoony in all of your posing or a nicer line of action. This seems to be everywhere. So that's very cool. Even have extra ones here to change your posing there and just the general form. And even though this might be harder leather, really depends on your style. What do you want to do? I'm going to just destroy this right here and do all of this. So lots of options here. I'm going to bring it back to somewhat of a default so you can turn these on and off if you want. So going back here, because you have all those controls, I already mentioned the ears, but there's also nothing as I checked here, nothing in the cheeks and nothing in the nose either or any type of squash and stretch on the head or overall mouth control where you have like a selection of all of these and you can just move the mouth around. So for some things, it's very, very detailed and in other parts, not so much. So the more options you're going to add on the rig and more control in the face and everything, it's going to make the rig even heavier. So there are trade-offs. Now zooming back, going back to this here, you have the sore, like I said, you can bring this here onto the right-handed section here if you want to. You can go back here on the parenting, you have world, root and spine, and then you have left grip and right grip, which is very cool. So if you do right grip and I'm moving now my arm around, it is actually constrained to the hand, which is very cool. And you can still animate this. I can just move this off to the hands and not on the hands, even though I'm a lefty, I'm gonna put this into a right hand. So you can see this here that whatever you do, and even if you switch, let's pretend, let's just go all messy here, switch to 
IK, you can see that it's still happening in all kinds of ways. And actually, now that I look at this here, it's also very cool that now you have the option with the back part here, but then because of this, you can still animate and change this while it is parented. That's very cool. I wish actually more rigs had that. It's a very, very cool option. So you don't have to do anything with animation layers or constraints. And actually, if you go back to this here, you can go back and do this on a left grip. It goes back to here now as I move this, you can see that it's all attached here. That's about it on that rig. One more thing here that as you see this here, this is your collision control here. Now, if you want to know more about all those things, because that's not quite my domain, you can go back to the site and you can go to the basic rig options here. So as you scroll down, it tells you about the setup, the display layers, all that good stuff here. And here's got your collision controls, tells you what that is, IKFK limbs, cloth control, and so on. And even here, you can go into part three. That gives you all the parent switching, that with the sword, twist and bang, and facial controls. And you can see here, useful pages. You got the rig software tools, tutorials, the basics. So overall, lots of information here on the site, on the different tabs that I showed. Also, if you want a different look at the rig, I highly recommend that you check out Sir Wade's channel. I mean, just in general, you should check out his channel anyway. But he has another walkthrough as well, going through the rig with demonstrations and talking about the pros and cons and links to his tools and all other goodies. It's absolutely worth a watch. So head over to his channel in general if you want to learn a ton of things. So don't miss his channel. And that's it for me. This was your quick look at the Osri rig. Don't forget to always kind of check in with the rigger to see if there are any updates or new versions of the rig. But that's it from me. Thanks for watching.